in what could be construed as one of the more creepier um, examples of my attempt at documenting my Canberra history, I am standing outside a school that I did not go to and could not go to. I am standing outside Canberra Girls Grammar. So why am I standing here? In 1993, a good mate of mine, Paul, was meant to go on a camp and he couldn't go on a camp. So he said, hey, do you want to go? So I went on this camp and I met this girl on it called Jessica. Out of that, we kind of hit it off during the camp, nothing much exciting. I would still talk. And then just after coming back from camp, which was on the school holidays, I eventually had the courage to ring her up and invite her to my year 12 formal, to which she said no. Heartbroken. There was a reason why. She had a ballet performance that night, so she actually couldn't go. So she turned around and she asked me to come to hers, the girl's grammar, formal. That was early in term four. For the next few weeks, couple of months, I realized I'd met someone that up until that point, I could say to members of my family, I loved them, but I actually had met someone that I did love. I had fallen in love with Jessica and never told her. I think we both had an understanding of, of how we felt because the biggest issue was she moved to Sydney for the following year. I knew she was going anyway. She was going up to do civil engineering at the University of New South Wales. I would travel up every now and then the following year to see my dad who lived up there and to see Jess, but, but things had changed. Um, it was never going to be the same again and, and we never tried to make it the same. We never actually said anything. It was all unsaid. But there were certainly times when I know that this was the most important person in my life was sitting, talking with me, trying to teach me ballet steps and um, dancing with me at her formal and um, going to her ballet concert, which I actually did do. And out of that, we would still see each other and at various times throughout the next 10 years or so. When I moved to Melbourne, I kind of stayed in contact with her, but I think I lost contact with her in about 2003. She was actually working overseas. She finally fulfilled her dream of being, and this is this is what I called her, and she she said she hated it, but she'd always smile of St. Jessica of the sewerage works. And now she builds tunnels. Um, like what everyone can do these days with the internet, you can find what people are doing, and I know that she's married, and I think she has a young child, and and lives in England. So I thought the best place to do justice to Jess was not anywhere, any one particular place. It was to come here. I remember coming to the girls' grammar fate and she blushed and she introduced me to all of her friends and they just looked at me and smiled and, and I remember Jess just glowing. But I'll never... You know, never doubt the fact that the first person I ever fell in love with was Jess. But um, it wasn't the first person I ever told. So if I think I have some regrets in life, not telling her how I really truly cared. And even now you can probably tell there's still something there as part of it. So to Jess, aka Jaffa, who ran a Jaffa basher stall here at the... Uh, at the fate, which I found quite ironic and she didn't realise and make the connection. I wouldn't be who I am without your influence.